India is an agriculturally important country. Nearly two-thirds of our population is engaged in farming. Agriculture not only provides us food but also raw materials for industries like textiles, sugar and food processing. Crops like tea, coffee and spices are even exported worldwide. But farming in India is not the same everywhere. It changes with geography, culture and technology. Broadly, we find different types of farming systems. Primitive subsistence farming. This is the oldest form of agriculture, still found in a few regions. Farmers use simple tools like hoes, douse and sticks and depend on rainfall and natural soil fertility. A common form is slash and burn farming, where a patch of land is cleared, crops are grown for a few years, and once the soil loses fertility, farmers shift to a new patch. In India, this is called by many names, Jumming in the northeast, Biwar in Madhya Pradesh, Podu in Andhra Pradesh, Kumari in the Western Ghats, and many more. This method is sustainable for nature, but land productivity remains low because no fertilizers or modern techniques are used. Intensive subsistence farming. This type is common in areas with high population density, where land is scarce. Here, farmers work very hard on small plots of land. They use irrigation, chemical fertilizers, and high-yield seeds to maximize output. It is extremely labor-intensive, since families depend entirely on these small farms for survival. However, due to continuous division of land from one generation to the next, farms have become too small, creating huge pressure on agricultural land. In short, India's farming ranges from the traditional, nature-dependent methods of subsistence farming to the intensive, input-heavy practices of modern agriculture. Together, they form the backbone of India's rural economy and food supply. Let's talk about commercial farming. The key feature of this type of farming is the use of modern inputs, high-yielding variety seeds, chemical fertilizers, insecticides, and pesticides. Why? To get maximum productivity from the land. But here's something interesting. The degree of commercialization is not the same everywhere. For example, rice is a commercial crop in Haryana and Punjab, but in Odisha, the same rice is mainly a subsistence crop. Can you think of other crops that serve as commercial in one state and subsistence in another? Now, another important form of commercial farming is plantation farming. Here, a single crop is grown on a large area. Plantations are special because they connect agriculture and industry. All the produce from plantations is used as raw material for industries. Plantations usually need large tracts of land, heavy investment and migrant laborers. In India, some key plantation crops are tea, coffee, rubber, sugarcane and banana. For example, tea in Assam and North Bengal, and coffee in Karnataka, are famous plantation crops. Since these crops are mainly grown for the market, transport and communication networks play a crucial role. They connect the plantation areas with processing industries and markets, making the whole system work efficiently. So, commercial farming is not just about growing crops. It's about integrating modern techniques, industry needs, and market demand. India is a land of great diversity, and this diversity is also reflected in its agriculture and cropping patterns. Farmers across the country grow a variety of food crops, fiber crops, fruits, vegetables, and spices. But broadly, India has three main cropping seasons, Rabi, Karif, and Zaid. Let's start with Rabi crops. These are sown in winter from October to December and harvested in summer between April and June. Some important rabi crops are wheat, barley, peas, gram, and mustard. The states of Punjab, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand, and Uttar Pradesh are leading producers of rabi crops. One reason for their success is the winter rainfall from western cyclones and, of course, the Green Revolution, which boosted wheat production in these regions. Next, we have the Karif crops. These are sown with the onset of the monsoon and harvested around September to October. The main Karif crops include paddy, maize, jawar, bajra, tur, moong, urad, cotton, jute, groundnut, and soybean. The key rice growing areas are Assam, West Bengal, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and Maharashtra's Konkan coast. Interestingly, paddy has also become important in Punjab and Haryana. And in states like Assam, West Bengal, and Odisha, farmers even grow three rice crops in a year, known as Aus, Aman, and Boro. Finally, there's the Zaid season. This is a short cropping period between Rabi and Karif, during the hot summer months. Crops grown in this season include watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber, vegetables, and fodder crops. Sugarcane is another crop, but it takes almost a whole year to mature. So with Rabi, Karif, and Zaid, India's farmers ensure that our fields remain productive throughout the year. 
India is an agricultural country where a wide variety of food and non-food crops are grown. These crops depend on the soil, climate and farming practices of different regions. Let's explore the major crops of India. Rice is the staple food crop of most Indians. Our country is the second largest producer of rice after China. It is a Kharif crop that needs high temperature, heavy rainfall and humidity. Thanks to canal irrigation and tube wells, rice is also grown in states with less rainfall such as Punjab, Haryana and parts of Rajasthan. Wheat is the second most important cereal crop and the main food in North and Northwest India. It is a rabi crop that needs a cool growing season and sunshine at ripening. Major producers are Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and Rajasthan. Millets such as jowar, bajra and ragi are called coarse grains but are highly nutritious. Jowar is mainly grown in Maharashtra and Karnataka, bajra in Rajasthan and Gujarat, while ragi is rich in iron and calcium and grown in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Himachal Pradesh. Maize is both a food and fodder crop. It requires warm temperatures and grows well in alluvial soils. Major maize producing states are Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and Bihar. India is the largest producer and consumer of pulses. They are a key source of protein in a vegetarian diet. Major pulses include tur, urad, mung, masur, and gram. Pulses require less moisture and improve soil fertility by fixing nitrogen. Sugarcane is a tropical and subtropical crop used to make sugar, jaggery, and molasses. India is the second largest producer after Brazil. Oil seeds like groundnut, mustard, coconut, Soybean and sunflower are also vital, used for cooking oils and industry. Tea and coffee are important plantation crops. Tea requires humid, frost-free climate and skilled labor. Assam, West Bengal and Kerala are leading producers. Indian coffee, especially the Arabica variety, is famous worldwide and grown in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. India is also the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables. Mangoes from UP, oranges from Nagpur, bananas from Tamil Nadu, apples from Himachal and Kashmir, and grapes from Maharashtra are famous worldwide. India's agriculture is not just about food crops. Non-food crops like rubber, jute, cotton and silk play a vital role in industry and trade. Rubber is usually an equatorial crop, but in India, it is also grown in tropical and subtropical regions. It needs a moist, humid climate with over 200 centimeters of rainfall and temperatures above 25 degrees Celsius. Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and Meghalaya's Garo Hills are the major rubber-producing regions. Jute, known as the golden fiber, grows well on fertile, well-drained soils in floodplains. It requires high temperature during growth. West Bengal, Bihar, Assam, Odisha, and Meghalaya are the major jute producers. Jute is used to make gunny bags, mats, ropes, yarn, and carpets. Cotton, one of the most important fiber crops, is the backbone of India's textile industry. It grows in the black soil regions of the Deccan Plateau, requiring high temperature, light rainfall, and plenty of sunshine. Major cotton-producing states include Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, and Punjab. Silk, on the other hand, is obtained through sericulture, the rearing of silkworms fed on mulberry leaves. India is one of the leading producers of natural silk. Indian agriculture has faced many challenges due to population pressure and small fragmented land holdings. After independence, land reforms such as the abolition of Zamindari and land consolidation were introduced. The Green Revolution and White Revolution brought major changes in the 1960s and 70s, increasing food production but benefiting limited regions. Later, land development programs, crop insurance, cooperative banks, and schemes like Kizan Credit Card and crop support prices helped farmers. Vinoba Bhave's Pudan and Gramdan movements, also called the Bloodless Revolution, inspired many landowners to donate land to the poor. In short, India's agriculture is diverse, from staple cereals like rice and wheat to nutritious millets, pulses, cash crops, and fruits. Together, these crops not only feed our nation but also strengthen our economy. From fiber crops like cotton, jute, and silk to reforms and revolutions in farming, 
India's agriculture tells a story of resilience, innovation, and hope for millions of farmers. This is the story of Indian agriculture, diverse, resilient, and essential for our nation's future.